My name is Gregory Cornelius, as, as she said, and I uh, work at HubSpot. But before I started at HubSpot, which happened about a month ago, uh, I worked at Automatic uh, with this guy. Uh, Good morning. I'm Matthias. I'm a developer and designer at Automatic. And uh, as you probably had guessed, uh, we're here to talk a bit about how React um, might influence WordPress and be used inside of WordPress, and why React is such a compelling and interesting technology. Um, but before getting into React, I want to ask a, a question. Uh, what, what is the future of WP Admin? Uh, just a tiny, tiny little question. Um, you, know, you know, if we were to start and, and build uh, WP Admin today, what would we do? Um, that's sort of the, the premise. Um, if we turn back the clock a bit and look at uh, WordPress as it existed about 10 years ago in 2005, uh, this is the experience that you would see when writing a new post. Uh, and if we sat down and we started writing, uh, you know, we would uh, say new posts, uh, write my super amazing, awesome thoughts. And then uh, when it came time to save those, I'd hit the save button. I'd wait for a little bit as the data goes flying over the internet to a web server. It's written in the database. Uh, WordPress uh, passes that back across the internet to my browser, and I see the result. Well, as a user, I had to wait a bit. My flow was interrupted as I waited um, for that post to be saved. And the thing is, uh, you know, if you look at the editor today, a whole, you, the experience really hasn't changed all that much from that standpoint. When you hit save today, the same flow happens. Uh, in terms of technologies, you know, we've seen this explosion of, of web technologies. And they've really changed how uh, web apps are, are built. Uh, so if we were to start today, we would definitely want to take advantage of these. Uh, of course, we also have now everyone in our, in our pockets, everyone has a phone, a smartphone in our pocket that's like a little mini computer that has a different size screen, a different way of interacting uh, with our, our digital media um, that we are using all the time. I imagine there's a bunch of you staring at one right now, because uh, who knows how interesting this talk really is. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the things that Apple has said is that uh, in terms of what they recommend, in terms of how, as an application developer, we approach creating our UIs, um, they suggest that people um, understand, should be able to understand and interact with the content, um, and that the UI should never compete with it, that we directly touch the content. And when we do that, it's, it's a different kind of experience. Now there's an expectation that the, that the experience is real time. When we touch in, uh, the content, we don't want it to disappear while something happens and then have it come back. So there's this sort of feeling of a, a real time experience. Which, of course, is, is the illusion of speed, the, the sense that everything is as right there, immediate. Uh, so if we come back to WordPress and think about, well, what would be the ideal for this future WP Admin UI, one thing we definitely would want would be this, this sense of speed and immediacy. We would also would want the content to be front and center. And, and, and we would want it to have a modern UI that utilized all of the capabilities that are available today on the web. Uh, so as Om Malik said recently in a blog post, in the past, WordPress hadn't done a good job of building the real-time experience that we as modern web customers have come to expect. So what, what if we tried to solve this problem? Uh, well, we have tried to a degree inside of WordPress. Both Matthias and I worked on features inside of uh, Core to try to bring some of that sort of feel and experience inside of WordPress. Uh, so I worked some on the, the media code base, and Matthias did a lot of great work to bring a, a new theme browser uh, to Core. Um, and you know, it, 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 we did. We improved the UX. We did make this a more captivating and, and engaging experience that the content was more front and center. Uh, but at least for me, when working on the media code base, uh, which is all written in Backbone, it's a very heavy JavaScript code base, uh, it wasn't an easy process. It was sort of like me as an audio engineer, which I was in a past life, trying to untangle this match of mess of patch cords, trying to figure out, well, what, how, are, how is this thing connected to this thing? How is this thing connected to this thing? It, it was just a lot of work. Um, so. 
when I discovered React, I thought I, when I was really interested because what React's goal is, is to really simplify the process of building a complex UI, to make that tangled mess clearer so that you can easily trace uh, how a particular thing is happening inside of your code base. And it wasn't just me that was excited about React. A bunch of other technology companies have embraced it, in addition to Facebook, who created it. Um, companies like Netflix and Yahoo and Airbnb and the company I work for now, HubSpot. And believe it or not, uh, WordPress.com has also really embraced it. Uh, so that has led us to Calypso. So Calypso is uh, the automatic sort of uh, attempt to imagine what WordPress would be if we started today. Uh, and Matthias is going to share a bit about Calypso. Yes. So for, for those not familiar with it, this is an open source project that Automatic released just about a week ago. And uh, you can check it out at that URL, or it's on GitHub as well, so you can download it and take it for a go. And as, as Gregory said, th this is a take on what WP admin could look if it was done entirely in, in JavaScript as a single page application. So to dive a bit more deeply into the technical aspects of this, is like why and how a single page application? So coming back to what Gregory was mentioning about the notion of speed and the expectation of speed by users, the single page application really, really allows you to sort of craft all the flows that you can do inside the administration page in a way that's much more smooth. Like with the, with the concept of the page reload, it's almost as if you have this house where to go into each room, you have to stop in front of the door and wait until it grows a handle. And, and that sort of like really stops you from like experiencing the full house in a way that, that's more immersive. So Calypso is written almost entirely in JavaScript using React. And it's also driven by the WordPress.com REST API. This last aspect was really fundamental for the work we wanted to do because it allowed us to completely decouple the server side, which is still powered by core WordPress, and which is very robust and has proved its success through many years, while experimenting on the client side with an entire JavaScript application. So this project took us like a year and a half, a bit more. And this is a, it's a bit blurry and malformed by the slides, but here you can see some of the interactions that you can do. And one of the first things that you notice is how smooth it allows navigation through different sections to be, like changing the site, going to the editor, and all those sort of things. However, this brings, a, for developers, it brings a challenge in how, now you have all these different states that the UI can be in. I need to figure out how to manage that in a way that's, that's easy for other developers to contribute to, and especially to develop new features. To manage this state, like this is a diagram of all, some examples of the different states the editor can be in. To manage this is where React really came to help us, and to avoid this sort of like mess that you can end up with. Remember, all of that, it's just within a single page application, there's not a single page reload. So Gregor is going to go a bit about some of the key features of React and how it helps with this. Yes, yeah, so if you think of Calypso as having really two pieces, one piece is this new modern UI, and the second piece is a developer experience that allows it and makes it easy to build the, a modern UI. And one of the reasons, or one of the things that React does that makes it easy is in order to build a big application, you need lots of contributors. Uh, and React actually has a really small API that is easy to learn. All, a lot of the complexity of React is under the surface. The developer doesn't have to deal with it. Instead, they're presented with some, a very simple API. And that means a new developer can come on and get started pretty easily. Uh, you know, it, it does require uh, learning JavaScript and understanding JavaScript if you don't have that experience. But if you do, uh, learning React is not that big of a step. Um, another thing that React has done is that instead of um, creating another template language. It's much in, in much of a similar way as WordPress and how it embraces PHP, React embraces JavaScript. The templates are uh, written in JavaScript, um, which brings a whole bunch of expressi expressivity to the language and how you describe uh, your UI. Uh, 
in terms of how events are handled inside of React, um, unlike if, if this was a backbone um, plus jQuery kind of app, events are bound directly as properties on the React DOM elements. And what this does is it basically removes the need to traverse the DOM. So what do I mean by traverse the DOM? If you've ever written a jQuery selector, uh, you have a, a little CS3 string, um, CSS3-like selector string that it just tells jQuery um, how to go find a DOM node in your tree of DOM nodes. And with React, you just don't even have to do that. And that frees uh, the developer to think of and concern themselves with other things. Um, another really critical feature is the composing of views together. So if you have um, a post view and then you have a post list, being able to put the post inside of the post list and compose them together. In Backbone, that's not a, a feature of Backbone itself. That's something that you have to add on top of it. Um, but with React, it's, it's part of the, the core functionality of, of the library. And it, that is very simple to do and very powerful, as we'll see. Uh, but probably the biggest feature of React that, that really um, attracted us is that instead of having to deal with updating this thing over here when some data changed or the user clicked here, I need to update this, and writing all this code to update little bits of the UI, in React you just render. Um, React will be smart and update the DOM as necessary. Uh, and this is a, an example of how that works. Uh, I don't expect you to be able to read it, but basically we have a few different statements and each time React does the right thing. The first time it updates the DOM, adds some, some elements to the, or adds an element to the DOM with some data. The second time uh, the statement is exactly the same and, and React doesn't do anything. And then the last time it is smart and just updates the text. Um, so in addition to, uh, utilizing JavaScript to express the UI, it uses functions um, in, in, in terms of how creating basically a, free, a tree of function calls instead of a string that, uh, that would represent the view. And that, that's really powerful. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with that. Um, and actually a friend of ours, Guillermo Rausch, wrote a great blog post that describes why this is so powerful. Um, and there's a link in the slides. I'll send out the slides uh, later today uh, via Twitter and, and you can check that out. Um, but when you're working with functions, uh, you've lost something in terms of readability. We all spend, uh, have spent a lot of time working with HTML, and we're used to seeing the angle brackets and the, the structure of HTML. Uh, so React actually provides a JSX syntax extension to JavaScript to bring, in, bring back that, that, that structure that, and syntax that we're used to with HTML. When we introduce this extension, we need a way to then get back to regular JavaScript. Um, and that's where, um, if you're working with React, you need to have a tool to take your JavaScript, uh, well, in the form of the, the JSX, and compile that into regular JavaScript. Um, so this would uh, be something that you would do maybe with Grunt or something like that, um, that would handle the tasks. Uh, in our case, we are using uh, Webpack um, and Babel to do the conversion from JSX to JavaScript. Uh, so this is just an example of a more complete component. Um, but the real big question is, why do these components matter? Like, how does that really change how we think about the application? Not only does the abstraction that React uh, the abstraction that React provides make it easy for the developers to keep and organize their code. There's another aspect of components that really makes things, uh, makes for uh, a really powerful experience. Uh, so if we think about uh, sort of how WordPress is structured, um, at least originally, um, you have HTML on top of which a layer of CSS and, and then scripts that are interacting with that HTML. What if we just threw that away and created components that encapsulated the JavaScript and the HTML because with React, JavaScript handles the HTML. And then if we're really careful with how we write our CSS, we can create little packages and compose them together and, and build our UI using them. And that's what we did with Calypso. 
Yeah, and th this is something that we really didn't anticipate when we started using React, but it turned to be one of the biggest benefits in terms of collaboration and ease of development. So this is a, a screenshot of the GitHub repository with some of the components that Calypso uses. And by components, we have the React component also together bundled with its visual design, so it's a self-contained unity. And this, this really produces a fundamental shift in how developers and designers communicate and, and how you can build new sections and new pieces of UI just by, by composing these different building blocks as Lego pieces. It also allowed us to create a, a very quick live, live components gallery that's actually running in Calypso if you download it and install it locally where you can check all the components that are available to build a new interface. And if you're making tweaks to a component, you can also use this to sort of see how it works. The other, the other nice benefit is that everyone benefits from that. It allows people to collaborate on some core components, and you know that they will benefit all of the interface. This is an example of a, of a very simple component that we have, which is a side component. We use this in many different places. We use it in the sidebar to show the current site you have selected, in site popover so you can select a site, in the editor to show where you're writing to. And, and the neat thing is that it's the exact same piece of code. It's just a site in angular brackets like the yellow thing that's sort of there, it's a, another component, a site indicator that you can enable as a property of this component. And th this was a really, a really nice a re like side effect of the technology stack that we, that we chose. One of the things that it also produces is that it, it gives us another layer of semantics to talk to, which does not have the, like the basic native HTML, which describes the document with things like header, main, aside. Now we have like app-specific components that you can use to describe an interface. And this also transcends the actual medium. Like it's, it's, it's much easier to collaborate across like the mobile web, desktop, and mobile, and, and the web using this sort of syntax because even, even if the, like, the actual implementation differs, it allows you to describe an interface in terms of its semantic pieces. So sort of to go back a bit, we're, with, with React, with introduction here in React in, in, and the ways it can sort of help move into more interactive experiences, we're really scratching the surface. Like Calypso is, was just open source, like it's totally up to the community to see what, what it can help us see, what, what we can learn from it and where we can take it. But React can also be used if you want to experiment with it. It can also be used in plugins and themes in a more, like you don't have to recreate all of the admin to, to use React. You can just drop it in a, like Gregory showed in the, in the code examples, you can just target a specific DOM element so you can have a React widget that just manages something. Or you can redo like the common stream in React using the API and see how it works. And the, the other really nice thing is how how this could shape up with the API as it's coming into core, and how these two things, like the evolution of the client and the server, can help push WordPress forwards. Um, Gregory made a simple boilerplate to sort of help with this. Yeah, yeah, so I had grand aspirations to, to create a, a plugin that uh, utilized React and, and solved some really interesting problem. Um, but in the end, I didn't have time to, to do that. And instead, I've created a, just a, a, a simple boilerplate plugin. So if you're interested in React and you want to try to get started with introducing it into a plugin or a theme, this is a plugin that you can go download. And it has the tools needed to, to compile your uh, JavaScript and compile um, the the SAS into CSS um, and also just kind of demonstrates how, how that setup might work. Um, you know, I hope to add more to it and make it a, a richer thing, but um, I thought I would share it with you today. Um, so, you know, we've, we've uh, Automatic has created Calypso as this new modern uh, UI um, uh, representing perhaps a future of WordPress, but where do we go from here? What, you know, this is really, as we just mentioned, this is just the beginning. Um, you know, the code just now is out in the open. Um, it's really up to everyone, everyone in this room, everyone listening in the future, uh, 
to, to um, contribute and think about and, and talk about and work on uh, that future. But we have a few ideas of where it could go and um, thought we might share them. So one is, what if we did have a library, sort of like what is in Calypso, but expanded, of UI components that covered all of the major functionality that was, that's part of WordPress? And you could, as a plugin author or an application developer, take advantage of those and use them either in your plugin or in some other context. And what if that then was used to create the new WP Admin UI? You know, what, what would happen if, if we did that? Is that a good thing? Um, yeah, I so no, I mean, so, sort of another, another thing related to this is how, how do plugins look in this world of like an API server side and, and a different client. Like would you have like API only plugins, like client plugins, how, how do both deal? This is really up for everyone to sort of figure out and start to see how things could work. Yeah, and what does a plugin look like that's written in React and in JavaScript? Um, you know, at this stage, uh, plugins primarily hook in via PHP. So what would happen if, if we had all of our interactions happening inside of JavaScript? But even beyond that, um, one, uh, one super interesting project that Facebook has put a lot of effort into is React Native. So there are, uh, there's now React Native is available for iOS and Android. And what it does is it brings that semantic and the, the user, the developer experience of React to the, the native platforms. And that's really pretty interesting because, um, you know, what if, what if WordPress was to embrace that and create apps using React Native that also uh, would allow developers that traditionally weren't contributing to native apps to contribute to WordPress apps? And since it's JavaScript, what if that also introduced some sort of plugin, plug-in system? Um, you know, who knows? What, I, don't, I, I have no idea what will happen, but uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, so, thank you everyone for, for coming. Um, I hope that there's a lot of questions and we wanted to yeah. make sure there was plenty of time for people to ask questions. You know, we've had our, our heads so deep in the creation of Calypso that uh, it's very, we're very interested to hear what everyone thinks and yeah. what their and, questions and, and are. And apologize for, for the slides, and the, but they are hard to read. <laughs> yeah, Matthias did a great job designing them, but uh, unfortunately <laughs> that hasn't translated on the screen. Hello. Uh, great presentation. I, I love the componentization that you're able to do in React. I, I'm wondering if you have any recommendations for doing component techniques when the rendering has to be server side. Are there any recommendations or, or tools that you would use to bundle markup, CSS, JavaScript when the markup rendering happens in PHP? Yeah, I mean, that's a, definitely a good question. Um, there, so it isn't something that I personally have looked at, but I think that um, Jack Lennox maybe has thought about this a bit, at least in terms of how, uh, so he's been working on what if we used React for a theme, and um, that sort of, uh, that same sort of issue comes up, I think. Um, yeah. I, it's a good question. I mean, on, I can say what Facebook does. So Facebook actually, they have this thing called XHP, which is sort of their equivalent to uh, React kind of components for the server. But, uh, but it's not something that I've thought about in terms of WordPress at this point. Yeah, in, in the case of Calypso, we are moving some of the things to, to, to be able to be rendered server side. So if, if you follow the project, there are some initial triads to make that work. So. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're talking about uh, componentizing your uh, parts of your application. How does the uh, web component standard fit into this story? That's, uh, that's also a, a good question. And um, so I'm trying to channel uh, Seb from the React team who has kind of has a coherent thought on, on why React um, is better than web components. Um, but 
one of the things about web components is that they're still tied to the DOM and the way that the DOM API works. And uh, React takes like a different approach. And the, there's a lot of benefits in terms of the developer experience and, and the, the consistency of that experience um, with React um, that you would lose if you worked with web components. I, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what where web com components will go, they haven't really taken off completely. Um, so I think we'll see. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Just time for one more question. Okay. Sorry. Thanks for a great presentation. I was wondering, I saw that you used SAS in uh, the Calypso. Uh, did you choose BAM or SMACS or any other uh, sort of standard naming conventions for classes and the like? Well, we used it. We, we don't use it a lot either. We use it for like a, a couple things, like variables, some mixings, and some like nesting composition. Like one thing that we were like more around like choosing what sort of preprocessor. We were really interested in seeing how because like the, the community is also moving towards like inline styles in JavaScript in React components, but we didn't want to go there. So we, we want to have like a very accessible style sheet for like designers to play with. That, that still allows you to, like, if you load it in the browser, that's also accessible for people, like, inspecting elements and being able to figure things out. Um, SAS has served us pretty well for that. Like, it's, again, we have a pretty strong set of guidelines into how we name classes and how we, well, one thing that, the one guideline we have is that we don't reuse classes, we reuse components. So the classes are pretty tied to components, which helps a lot, in the, especially since we have a global style sheet. In the end, yeah, and the naming s scheme is inspired by BEM, so that's the block element yeah. modifier uh, naming scheme for classes, um, which is to avoid the kind of global namespace that's a part of uh, CSS. Uh, so each class is unique. Yeah. Does this answer sort of feel? Yes. Good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.